So far, we've looked at two separate plant organs. Those were the roots and the stems. We're going to conclude our look at the plant organs by entitling the next flowchart Plant Organs 4. And we will be looking specifically at the final organs, which are plant leaves. And leaves are also going to be organs classified within the larger shoot system of a plant things above the ground. And I think that's pretty easy to understand. We see leaves above the ground, of course. Um, one thing I want to reiterate, when we look at any plant organ, we are of course looking at all three tissue types. Dermal, ground, and vascular are all going to be found within the leaves. Look at that figure we mentioned in the previous sort of organization flowchart, the first one, to really drive home that point. So, let's look at the leaf. First, what we'll sort of get out of the way is establish the overall function of the leaf because it has a very specific structure that's going to be tied to this function. The overall function of the leaves is incredibly important, as you can tell really by the fact that plants have so many leaves. This is going to be the main photosynthetic. This is going to be the main photosynthetic organ uh, in most vascular plants. So we know vascular plants are the most successful, the most widespread, and thus the way that they get their energy, the way that they do their thing is by utilizing these leaves, these photosynthetic organs. In addition, because they are going to be good in photosynthesis, their function will also be incredibly capable in capturing light. So they capture light very well, and they also, because of photosynthesis being a main function, they are a very important site of gas exchange. So they are a gas exchange site. This is where CO2 can enter, O2 can leave, and that's where we have a very nice photosynthetic reaction occur. Now, let's look at the structure of leaves. This is where we have some sort of new stuff, because this stuff that we established, this overall function, pretty much uh, intuitive. We can understand this. Leaves are good at that. But what is the structure that's critical to allowing this function to work so well? Now, the structure of the leaf will consist of something known as a blade. A blade is simply going to be the generally uh, sort of flattened part of a leaf. That's it. So the flattened part of a leaf is the blade structure. In addition, another structure to understand is known as the petiole. The petiole of the leaf is something just related to the stalk. You can think of it as just the stalk of the leaf. This is going to be specifically the point at which we have uh, the specific structure that joins the leaf uh, to the stem. Joins a leaf to the stem and we know that where this occurs is of course at the node. The node, which was a part of our stem structure, is going to be where we have a petiole. A petiole will extend out and grow a leaf from it. Now, the thing is, the petiole is not found in all plants. There's a very obvious example of things that do not have petioles, and that would be many grasses. For example, EX example, many grasses. Many grasses are going to be uh, without petiole. So we don't see leaves sort of growing off of a piece, a blade of grass, let's say. They're just a blade, right? That's why we call it a blade of grass. Um, so many grasses without petiole. They have their own mechanisms to sort of make up for this. Now, another structure to know uh, that's very important in the function are the veins of leaves. Veins are going to be the critical point of vascular tissue. So notice Leaves have dermal, ground, and vascular tissue. We're explicitly right now mentioning the fact that the vascular tissue is going to be as construct the veins of the leaf structure. So vascular tissue is going to be specifically for conduction, which is simply just movement, bringing up water, bringing up sugars, things like that, and also support. That's essentially vascular tissue in a nutshell. Conduction and support. Never forget that. VT, vascular tissue, is for conduction and support. Now, the other thing about veins we want to sort of mention here is the fact that there are going to be distinct patterns. And those patterns will be specifically between the monocots, which are those that have one embryonic leaf, seeded plants, usually angiosperms, and also dicots. So two separate patterns that we'll look at very quickly in terms of the vein orientation. In monocots, one cotyledon, one embryonic leaf, they will have no, something known as a parallel major vein. Parallel major veins, I should say. Major veins. 
That's their pattern. That's their orientation of the veins. Um, and these are going to essentially be the same diameter as the leaf. So the whole leaf structure is essentially encompassed in these parallel major veins because they're the same diameter as the leaf itself. Dicots will have a different pattern, a different orientation of veins, of vascular tissue then. And these dicots, um, I'll actually call them eudicots here because uh, you can use those interchangeably, so I want to do that. Eudicots, they will, they will actually have something known as a branched network. So what do we have here? We have branch network versus parallel major veins. A branch network will be just something that arises from the midrib of the leaf. So I'll say arises from midrib. So the middle basically, and it's going to go down the middle of the leaf. Down the middle of leaf. So basic component, basic idea to understand here, monocots, eudicots, they have two separate patterns for their vascular tissue orientation that gives them separate vein structures, parallel major veins versus branch network of veins. Finally, last thing in this video, in this flowchart, take a look at figure 35.2. Here we have an overview of a total flowering plant. You'll see the roots, you'll see the leaves, and you'll also see the stem. You'll see the root system and the shoot system sort of as a whole. The key idea again about these organs is remember that every organ, leaves, stems, and roots, all have dermal, ground, and vascular tissue. We're going to now look at those types of tissue systems in more detail in the next flowcharts.